Stargazing Live is back on the BBC. It's all leading up to tomorrow's solar eclipse. It tops a week of extraordinary space news. And here with a roundup of it all is our science correspondent, David Gregory Kumar. You're starting with the sun. We are indeed, Nick, as you can probably tell there. This is an image just released from a space telescope that studies our sun. Uh, it's run by NASA, but it's partially built by the University of Birmingham. Now, this disk in the centre is blocking out the bright centre of the sun that would otherwise blind the instruments and reveals all the activity around the edges. And this is a massive burst of gas and magnetic fields streaming out from the sun, and it was this that gave us the northern lights here in the Midlands for once. This is Malvern. Meanwhile, engineering students from the University of Warwick have built their own small atmospheric probe and successfully launched it from Sweden. Although, like all the best probes, it did cause them a bit of concern. As it ejected, there's like a 15 second delay before we actually get a signal. So it's quite a nervous moment where we've heard it's ejected, everyone's counting 15 seconds. Um, but then we got a really clean signal through. Um, as it kind of comes down, it tumbles quite a lot, so there are bits where it seems like cut in and out a little bit. But um, yeah, we're very happy with our data, really, really happy with how it went. Um, should be able to get some good results from it. So all this leads us to the big space news of the week, the solar eclipse. The Stargazing Live team are all over tomorrow's eclipse, but it's not the first big BBC attempt to cover an eclipse live. That happened back in 1961. For a young BBC director, now happily retired in Staffordshire, it all started badly as a royal visitor meant the team were locked out of their own studio. And she said, well, I can't help that. Um, the Queen Mother is being shown round the studios and she's in there and no one else is allowed to go in now because, you know, till she's finished. And I said, well, you know, I, I don't care. The sun isn't going to stop eclipsing for the Queen Mother. So royalty permitting, what's the best way to view the solar eclipse? Well, um, like this telescope that you see here, has a special part which filters out the light of the sun in a way that allows us to see the, the prominence there, it's uh, called. There are filaments of gas surrounding the sun, and you can see the eruptions on the sun. And that's a very special way of looking at the sun. In fact, this telescope can even take video of the sun. Here it is, boiling away. But you don't need to spend thousands to see the sun safely. Poke a tiny hole or two in a piece of card and watch the image of the sun be eclipsed by the moon. So, one last warning about the power of the sun. Melted telescope eyepiece. So do stay safe tomorrow. But provided you do, it should be a great event. Of course, it all depends on the weather. Here's a special school report, Solar Eclipse weather forecast. Hello, I'm Emily for School Report on BBC Midlands Today. Tomorrow there's going to be a partial solar eclipse but the question is, will we be able to see it? At the moment, it's looking hopeful with cloud breaking up across the West Midlands. If you want to see it, the best time to look at the skies is 9.30 a.m. and it looks like we'll get some breaks in the cloud just in time, so make sure you wear your special glasses. This was Emily for School Report. And if you don't catch this eclipse, well, there's another one in 2026. So it's all looking good for the Midlands. The last eclipse in 99 was cloudy here, but fingers crossed for tomorrow. And for more advice on watching the eclipse safely, check out the Stargazing Live website. Back to you, Nick. Yeah, it's all fascinating. Thanks, David.